headphones or something. Hey guys, what's up? Hey Carrie. Hey, I'm gonna get some pizza. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> starting in two minutes. Oh, this is fucking killing me right here. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Closing down windows, reserve bandwidth. And I think I'm good now. Is that better? Yeah, I think so. Hold on. Let me do this. How about now? Man, that's good. Keep talking. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Blake? Hello? Hello? Blake, can you hear me? If you can't hear me, then you should change it. You'd think we're on the 13th one by now. We would have this shit figured out. Blake, is that you? Can you hear me now? Yeah, it just sounds like there's like a dishwasher running in the background or something there for a second. Uh, shouldn't be me. Okay. I think we'll be all right. I can pull headphones out if I need to. Um, I, don't, I don't know why it's... Hey. No, I think we'll be all right. All right. We're just waiting for Ryan jumped on, then he jumped off, and then uh, and then we'll kind of get cracking here. Actually, does that work better now? Yes, that's perfect. I think I fixed it. Okay, there we go. Cool. All right. I'll tell you what, these video things are a lot easier to do when you just show up and... Uh, all you got to do is talk for an hour. I was trying to set up that blind tasting. I'm like, geez, this is a whole lot more work than. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not that bad, though. No, what'd you get the hang of it? I was just, I don't know. I was trying to, you know, trying to get four or five guys together to be on at the same time and everyone's video working and speakers and everything. But it's a, dude, the AV is like the toughest part of being able to do this all the time, right? Now we, like, we got our stuff down now, but. Yeah. Bringing on people, I mean, it's a people suck at AB. Oh, Carrie, you look like you're in, a, you're, you're in a new spot tonight, man. I you got a new kitchen. Is is this, this the new? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. He's he's done hanging in the basement. Looks like yeah. it. <laughs> and this Isn't is like bourbon room? living room. Like, look at this. Yeah. Look at yeah. these nice built-ins. It's got TV in here. Got new windows. I guess the jam, man. That's awesome. Like, yeah. So, has your wife given you the okay to fill in those built-ins with a bunch of bottles? Because I have my own bar now up here, so now I have my second bar. I have the one downstairs, and now I have one upstairs. So it's good. There you go. That's yes. the life right there. It is the life. Let's All right, see. we'll give Ryan another minute here. All right. Well, my pizza. <laughs> this is my pizza beef. I'll be just talking or like listening for a little bit while I eat. Is Sorry. Brian coming on tonight? No, he, he said he could only make it like last Thursday or something. Okay. I couldn't remember. There were so many dates floating around. Yeah, and I, uh, I didn't uh, lost check. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't ask anybody else to, to fill in for him either. I guess I could have, but I just didn't have time. <laughs> Been too busy trying to get rid of stags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. Did it end up going for four twenty five or whatever it was? I put one on Mega Balls and oh, that's nice. sold. So nice. Yeah, actually, somebody said. Um, I, I was going to ask you how the flipping went, Kenny. I could say the same for you with your your <laughs> pick. 
Now, <laughs> yeah. oh, today, there it is. Oh, there it is. Call him. Clear about something. Number one, I talked to the head of Smooth Ambler and I told him that I was in debt to my wife. And the only time I ever sell a bottle is when I have to pay off debt to my wife. If I overspend and the wife notices, I pay back that debt. It's the only time I do it. And so there was quite a, there was quite a substantial debt that had to be paid back. Yeah, I can, <laughs> I can talk to you about debts uh, after we stop a broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> kind of how the way things work around here. Yeah, for sure. You need separate accounts. Um, yeah. <laughs> 22 said Ryan's out flipping his BTAC samples. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, will you post the uh, we'll um, talk about it. comment link? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, man. Oh, never mind. I got it. I got it. I got it. Like, it's like you're figuring this out, man. I know. Uh, it's, you know <laughs> do one of these. I'm a pro now. <laughs> How many people we got tonight? Uh, right now we're at 28 and we haven't even started yet. So we'll. Uh... Oh, somebody wanted to know if I'm on plastic cups. Look, I am back to actual glass. Ooh, the Canadian Glen Cairn? Yeah. I'm actually a fan, big fan of those. I, yeah, somebody but, sent me um, these. These are great. Yeah, it's got the little Canadian symbol on the bottom, but I think I feel like it. Um, the nose is better than a regular Glen Cairn. What's the what's the Canadian symbol? Basically, just a maple leaf underneath it or something. Yes, maple leaf. Oh shit! See, what a good guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but hey. it's just, I feel like it's open up more at the top, and you can get a better nose from the stuff. Right on. All right, I'm gonna lock my door real quick, and then we can get rolling. Yeah. It looks like we got our our full crowd with us. So lock your door. What are you trying to keep out? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> my kid <laughs> will come <laughs> upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> And all the hookers, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we Wait, live yet? Is that recorded? <laughs> settle, settle down, ladies. Like, I got to record this bourbon stupid thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so what we'll do is we'll kick it off. Since Eric is a, a first timer here, um, we gotta we gotta uh, initiate him, give him a little bit of hazing, and I think we can we can kick it off. Uh oh. Do twenty burpees. <laughs> this is a bourbon discussion and we're going to throw out physical exercise as the hazing. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I'm thinking a chug or uh... All right, we're doing our, our diddly dee. Right. Yeah, I'll go ahead and kick it off. Right. Welcome back to the episode of the Bourbon Pursuit Podcast, the official podcast of bourbon, the number one podcast of bourbon. If you do a search on iTunes as well, we have the 13th edition of the Bourbon Community Roundtable, which is always a crowd favorite. I think I've said it. Well, this will be the 13th time now. We do this on YouTube Live. So if you want to be a part of this, go ahead, join it, click the link, and you can be a part of the discussion. We've got a chat rolling in. We've got a little bit over 40, 45 viewers right now. So this is uh, this is going to be a fun one, Ryan. How you doing? Man, I'm doing well. I, I was having some first world problems with my Wi-Fi, so I'm just a little late to the party. But uh, glad to be here. Really excited for this one. Well, good. I'm glad we glad we can do that. And, you know, we always, you know, Brian can't make it tonight. And I didn't do uh, what I could usually do is try to find somebody else. I was too busy doing some other stuff. But uh, I also have to, we have to, we have to talk about, we have got a new face on the round table tonight. It is the, it, we've, I don't know, guys, how long do you think that we've talked and said like this third guy, he's, he doesn't exist. <laughs> The entire time, I thought yeah. it was just you know they took a picture of the two of their faces and somehow made Eric you know out of this, but he's he a real person. For three writers. Yeah, he is a real yeah. person. <laughs> so uh, Eric from Breaking Bourbon, man, welcome to the show. Woohoo! Thanks, guys. You made it. So Victor I guess victory. Yeah, before we kick it off, man, I guess you got to tell us a little bit about you because you know we talk about Jordan and Nick all the time. So I guess. Give us a little bit of your background and where you're coming from and all that good stuff. Uh, you know, like the guys probably have said, we, the, the three guys, the Breaking Bourbon guys, we all grew up together. Um, we've been friends for a long, long time, elementary school. Uh, got into bourbon kind of at the same time, and, you know, we started the website. Um, but for me personally, I guess I, I have a background in graphic design and web uh, website development and that sort of thing, and that's kind of where our hobby kind of came out of too. It's, hey, why don't we, let's write about bourbon and we have the tools to 
kind of make a website and do this. You're so what main. what would you say is your specialty of the website? Because I know that you know you guys all kind of share the reviews, but you do you do some reviews too. Do you think you do reviews better than Nick and Jordan? Absolutely. <laughs> His HTML is way better. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> our goal tonight is to pin one Breaking Bourbon member against the others. <laughs> yeah, most people say I'm the best Breaking Bourbon member. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what we're looking for. That's the sound bite. <laughs> I can tell you, mainly my mom, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that Breaking Bourbon, you're, the way that you lay out information is so easy to read. That's why people Big love letters. Yeah, well, they just the, the, it's so detailed, and people love to use your posts when they try to sell stuff. Mm -hmm. So, congratulations on helping to contribute to that. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll talk a little about that, and you know some of the reviews that you all have done. But I want to let uh, the other Is two Carrie's guys sitting on the floor. I was just curious. Carrie's <laughs> in, his, in his yeah. You missed that before we started recording. He's he's in his new uh, environment now that he is not banished to the basement uh, forever. So he's he's just chilling. On his couch, eating his frozen pizza. <laughs> and his basement got flooded. He had to move upstairs. <laughs> oh, my kitchen's so pretty now. Nice. <laughs> so I want to let you know, that you guys go. So, Carrie, you've already started talking. So, kind of talk about uh, you know where you blog from and your favorite kind of pizza as well. All right. So uh, I'm Carrie. I like long walks on the beach and pepperoni pizza with extra sauce on it from uh, Papa John's. Uh, I run uh, suburbia.com. S u b o u r b i a dot com. You can follow me on Twitter at bourbon underscore gamer and uh you can also find me as usual on what board blake <laughs> bourbon our facebook group bourbon our facebook group that's right he is uh the uh, official um sponsored Bastard. admin for the uh, entire page so if you have a problem <laughs> with the post getting deleted just go ahead and hit up carrie <laughs> he will, he'll let you know why it was taken down he's the moderator okay. yeah he's the official moderator <laughs> I'm not admin. I just moderate, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, my up. Yep, you're up, Blake. All right, I'm Blake from Bourboner.com. You can find me at Bourboner.com backslash blog, the Bourboner Facebook group, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Slowly trying to put more stuff on YouTube, and that's pretty much it. Awesome. So there was uh, there was some good news in, in bourbon and whiskey this week. You know, some of it was sleuthing from uh, from Carrie, which we'll talk about towards the end of the show. But you know, there's there's one big name in whiskey that's out there. That's Jim Murray, and he came out with his picks for the top whiskeys of the year. And I don't know, maybe it was a, it was a surprise to me. Um, I don't know about you guys because everybody's gotten a chance to try it and taste it. And Jim Murray picked E.H. Taylor's Four Green, which was a limited release. Uh, it was probably a few months ago is when it kind of was when it came out as his choice for Whiskey of the Year. Um, immediately, it didn't take more than uh, four hours that the prices on the secondary market went up about $100. So it went from about a $200, $200 bottle to about a $300 bottle. Um, and it was down to a $200 bottle because in my opinion, and I think in some other people's opinions, it wasn't that good. So uh, I kind of want to push it over to somebody else to kind of think about what are your thoughts on the H. Taylor four grain and is Jim Murray just uh, losing credibility over here as uh, Z Hayden 35 said? I think before we <laughs> talk about four grain itself, I want to know how do you pronounce a 2007 whiskey of the year in September? I mean, how, yeah. Like, is yeah. it based on a, a calendar, like an academic calendar year? Like, is, are we well, talking about 2007 this? was 10 years ago. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, how do you pick the, the whiskey of the year in September? With three months ago, where when everything's releasing. Yeah. Like, he, I mean, has he tried everything to say four grain is whiskey of the year for, has he tried all the antiques, all the pappy? Like, well, I'm I mean, sure he I think probably he got a chance. Go was. ahead. I think he cuts off in about August or so for the, the print of it. I mean, aren't the antique collections usually from the previous year? Oh, that's true. I didn't think about that. Um, because, yeah, there are a few of them in there. Let's see. Is Blake choppy? Or yeah, I was about to say. I was like, well, we'll yeah, kind of do a little cut right here. Blake, you kind of sound like you're um, from the Is feed. that better? Keep, keep that going. Better? No, you still sound like you're cutting in and out. No. Son of a gun. Um, come, come on, man. Now. Is that better? Is that better? <laughs> nope. Well, this is kicking off great, guys. So why don't Run we? Back. 
This is good. Right, look, he's angry. Just don't be angry. <laughs> it's okay. Let's let's keep we this the, the bullshit going before he comes back because I'm just gonna cut all this out. So Well so why yeah, so I guess Brian, what do you think? Like why is he awarding something in September? You talking to me? Uh, yeah, sorry. Oh, I, I thought you said Brian. Brian's right. not even on here, but all right, yeah. never mind. I blacked out. Hey, let's do this over again. Let's read this. Yeah. Do the uh, do do. Welcome to the podcast, and let's get it. Going. <laughs> the very beginning. This does get edited out. Am I better now? No, you still sound horrible. You were sounded fine a minute ago, but it, it just sounds like it's very crack, like it's crackling. Just set your router, Blake. Okay. No, don't do that. Just if you need to, drop off and come back on, or figure out if it's your microphone like connection or something. All right, he dropped off. So, like right, Alex, Alex says he needs to reset his AOL. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess that's my question is that if you award something like that mid season, are you basing it off of is it in August to August? Does he say this is from August to August? Because I mean, wasn't there didn't it include Booker's Rye in the same, you know, twelve month span and um all the you know, there were some great releases last year. I thought William Larry Weller was really, really good last year. Uh, um, no, because Booker's Rye was his choice of 2016. If that's, no, it was Canadian Rye Harvest. Then was it 2015? I know. I thought. I thought one of. I thought Booker's Rye was chosen of his his whiskey of the year one year, or was it second or something like that? I'm gonna look it up and see. Yeah, I have Google. I know the yeah, crowd. This, this is all gonna be oil. garbage cut out right here until Blake comes back on and joins. Brown <laughs> oil harvest rye was last year whiskey of the world but and is, isn't four grain was it bourbon or was it actually just whiskey it's bourbon, it's bourbon. It's bourbon. It's blake talk is this is this better yes sir yes. yeah okay uh, Good. there we go okay where'd we end up on whiskey of the year can i still throw in my two cents oh, all yeah. right let's let's kind of like let's, let's rewind okay. that a little bit um, perfect uh so I guess, Carrie, you start off when, when you were starting saying, well, is it August to August? And then we'll kind yeah, of just so, roll from there. So he, he announced a winner in August. And, um, okay, he does a previous year. So in, in 2016, he actually awarded William LaRue Weller from 2014. Is that how it's supposed to work? Well, I'm looking at it, and it says, like, Booker's Rye won 2017. Booker's Rye was 2016, right? Is it like 2017 is actually 20? I don't know. So, so Max Christie's figuring this out for us. So he's calling <laughs> Four Grain as the winner of 2018. Okay. Booker's Rye was of 2017. Crown Royal Harvest was 2016. So now I think we've got that settled. Right. We can kind of move on a little bit from here, okay? So does the actual the actual book doesn't come out until next year, I guess? I would think that's – you're correct. So, okay. which, so I mean no, – There's no 2018 winners. Oh, it is 2018. Book. Yes, it, that is his 2018 winner is, is EH four grain. Four grain, right? Yeah. To, to me, it always it, – it's become a way to sell books because – which I mean, I guess that's what all this is. But <laughs> it, it, uh, at the end of the day, you know, with the Crown Royal win and Booker's, I agreed with. I actually liked the Four Grain. I thought it, I thought it was good, but was it Whiskey of the Year? Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. You know, of course, every year it's like, well, so and so's Diageo's paying them to do this. Well. Sazerac sure took home a lot of medals this year, so somebody's paying. I guess it was Sazerac. I think they won about every whiskey category there was for American whiskey. Um, they got Adidas back in them, you know, giving them cash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a conversation for later in the. Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> I think that, that was the other issue I had with it was it was it was all Sazerac, right? It was Sazerac yeah. and couches. Like there are other people yeah. out there making bourbon. Um, yeah, I just which, don't see I mean, Al, Al, Al Young's done get in there. I mean, that was my uh, that, favorite so far. I thought the Al Young was in there, and even I, I never see Elijah Craig Barrel Proof get in there, and I thought that was awesome. a really good. Yeah, race. this year's was awesome. Um, so who knows? I mean, there's a lot of politics at play. And at the end of the day, it's a guy who has been known for rating, you know, Scotch and other malt, single malts, and that kind of stuff. So now that he's in bourbon, I feel like he's just trying to sell more books and 
his face on the front of the book still creeps me out no matter what, no matter how many times <laughs> I see it. If I walk yeah. past it on my dresser, like I have to hide it from my kids. So <laughs> it looks like he's trying to be the Dos Equis man or something. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just whiffing hard. I think, I think he's, he's one of those that um, markets to the person who doesn't know anything about bourbon and rye. Yeah. And yeah. he's like the, you know, the, 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 the person wants to buy a gift for someone that they know is into bourbon. They don't know what they're buying. They go into Amazon or they go into, you know, Barnes and Noble and they say, Oh, look, here's a, here's a book on world whiskeys. I know that Billy Bob drinks whiskeys. And you know, that's, that's kind of his market right there is the people who don't really know much. And the people who are, I remember hearing bourbon truth talk about him three or four years ago, just saying how ridiculous his selections were and mm -hmm. how he, he was, you know, paid off by whiskey companies and, I haven't really put much credibility into him. I would take John Hansel over his mm -hmm. his opinions, you know, any day. Well, I mean, the, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of money, as as you'd mentioned earlier, that gets thrown around by these whiskey companies. Um, I mean, if you look at, you know, even the San Francisco World Spirits competition, like, uh, is there anything that doesn't get a gold or a double gold? Like everything does, right? Like it, if you rate it an 80, like at least an 80, it deserves a gold and then everybody markets the shit out of it. And a lot of these are really, uh, you pay to play, right? I mean, it's all put on by, it's sponsored by those kinds of companies. And so therefore they have a vested interest in it uh, at the same exact time. Uh, Eric, I kind of want to get your thoughts too. I know we're kind of speaking over you here. That's all right. Uh, I kind of I liked four grain. I didn't you know I didn't think it was great, uh, but I I enjoyed it and it had a different taste to it. It was kind of interesting and you know I think maybe Jim Murray just he take he tastes so many different things that something like that that's just a little different kind of sticks out to him and maybe he remembers it more or goes on a short list and then as he goes down he goes you know which one did I really remember the most going through these what what made the impact on me. And maybe that's how he picked it. I don't know. You know, maybe he gets sick of picking antique collection every year. You know, that's not going to sell books. Um, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, Alex Catalan kind of made a uh, a pretty good comment, and he said, if you award the big boys, then those books are going to end up in their gift shop and probably promotional materials and packages going forward. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it does make sense that they would do that too. That's a great point. Yeah. You know, and that's not that four grain really – was co that controversial. I think last year we were more bewildered that he chose such a terrible whiskey as his world whiskey of the year. If you, if any of you tried the Northern Harvest Crown Royal, I mean, you, you, you Oh, that was, that was like three year, last year was Booker's Rye, right? Yeah. Last year was Booker's Rye. Is that really oh. two years ago? Yeah. Hey guys, it's a different calendar year. Just think of it <laughs> as like, as like the, the year. That's, this it's is four like grain is NCAA like basketball season. You know, four like, grain is the like, is the 2018 winner. Okay, so let's just now we got that laid out, right? <laughs> well, let's let's not try to figure out calendar days here. But who buys Crown Royal? Like, if anything, the funny thing is, I remember going into the store the next day, and the sh shelves were gone of Crown Royal rye, and I think I still. I still have like a bottle that's three quarters of the way gone in my cabinet from, I mean, it's a decent rye at best, nowhere near world spirit of the, cause I remember having the conversation. I was like, well, maybe he just meant like, Hey, this is whiskey of the year because it's good. It's affordable. Everyone can, it's available. And they're like, no, he said it's the best thing he's <laughs> tasted all year long. I'm like, well, okay, never mind. I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but that's just, that's just not true. I thought the only people who drank Crown Royal was uh, U of L fans. I didn't know that anybody else did. <laughs> quit, quit alienating some of our <laughs> listeners. Jesus, Ryan. Sorry. Michael, uh, is it Michael Urado? Mm -hmm. uh, he said, Jim Murray made me go out and buy Northern Harvest. He owes me 35 bucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Michael. It's, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it's so, so here. I've had a chance to taste uh, four grain. I, I think, uh, you know, I'll echo some of Eric's comments like, yeah, it was, it was all right. I didn't think it was anything too special. Um, you know, I still want a bottle for myself because – just collecting and wanting something that's out and that's new. Yeah, I want it. Um, for me, I have a theory that if they knew for the longest time that four grain bourbon was the best possible way to make bourbon, then they would have been making four grain bourbon the entire so, damn time. Right? right. So I don't, that's why I don't come around and I think like, Oh, this is a great bourbon or great whiskey. I don't think there is much there for me. So I, I was kind of, you know, 
uh, underwhelmed by it. But yeah. the, the speakeasy had a good question because as we've talked about this before, the four grain was a limited release this year. However, we know that they are coming out with another four grain release next year. So how is this going to affect the, the chase in the market? I oh, think it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eric's making basically like a, a an upwards mobile graph here, just like putting his yeah. hands in the air. So yeah. Did That's somebody surf. make that point? That's a really good point. They have another batch of it coming out next year. Mm hmm Is it different four grains or the same? Just one year older. Just one yeah. year older, gotcha. They just had a what large was it like eleven years or something? Yeah, the first twelve. It'll be twelve next year. Okay. Yeah. Um I mean, yeah, it, I don't even want to see the prices and the marketing that's going to go around it of, you know, world's best whiskey named by, well, I guess they probably just don't even name it. They say world's best whiskey and it's now available. Every store who gets a bottle is going to immediately put that on the shelf, which, yeah, perfect for marketing. But if you're just wanting to buy a bottle, there go your changes because wasn't that the one that had like a super high bottle count the first time yeah mm -hmm. but you know we live in a, a day and age in bourbon where it doesn't matter i mean if it's limited edition it's already gonna have a higher price oh, yeah. than, um, if it even hits a shelf so we, we you know that's i think that's irrelevant whether or not jim murray praises it i mean we're, we're gonna still fight for it and most of us are still gonna pay more than we should for it <laughs> Yeah, that's typical. But you know, it's it's one of those things that people are going to go for it no matter what. I, uh, I honestly, I was a little relieved when it started dropping down on price in the secondary market, and you could get it for two hundred dollars. And mm -hmm. you know, hundred dollars over retail, like for a limited release, you're like, okay, well, that's that's actually not too bad. Um, then this shit happens, and now it's going to make it. Um, you know, a little bit harder to, to come across and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and let's kind of move on to uh, the next subject here. Uh, and I haven't had a chance to try it. I know uh, because I don't get samples ever sent to me, but I know a few guys here have had the chance to try the new Woodford Reserves Master Collection. So whoever has and has some information can can talk to us about it. Go ahead and, and kind of uh, give some info. What is it? Exactly. That's why I'm asking Blake or Eric or Carrie. I, I don't get <laughs> the twisted rye or something. Is I, it? I think I talked too bad about Brown Foreman uh, for a while because I don't get anything from them. No old Forrester, no Woodford. Um, That's why we don't get it because of Ryan. <laughs> well, <laughs> can't, you know. We can't help it. The Woodford sucks. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so Carrie Carrie's got the bottle in front of us. So Carrie, kind of kind of okay. spilt some information about what this is. Uh, talk about it. Don't show it. This is an audio podcast. Masters collection <laughs> cherry wood smoked barley. So um, they took some Woodford and they took cherry wood and they smoked it <laughs> and they ate barley and they spit back in the barrels and then they dumped a bunch of Woodford in it and then they rolled them. Down the pastures, oh, down then, that little rail. You know, I don't think that was in the press release. Oh no! I, I <laughs> and then they bottled it um, and sent it out to the world. So I think um, it's terrible. Um, but Breaking Bourbon disagrees with me. So we've got a little little fight. Uh -oh. So nice. I'll, I'm ready to hear y'all. Yeah, it out. come on, Eric. Let's go <laughs> ahead. And talk about it. Yeah, so I'm the one that reviewed it, so this works out good. Um, so it actually has 30% malt in it, and that makes it definitely different than their usual. Um, so I thought I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I gave it a three and a half out of five. Um, I thought the nose was really bright. Uh, I had a kind of almost like a cherry Kool-Aid smell. Um, it, the flavor, the, the palate wasn't super strong, which I think it could have been a little stronger, but I, I enjoyed it. And I think the malt really is really, you know, kind of comes across pretty strong over it. And then you got a little bit of that cherry and smoke on the, more on the finish and a little heat on the finish. Um, I enjoyed it a lot more than the, the last couple, especially the Pinot Noir one from a couple years ago I reviewed. And then, you know, the Brandy last year was decent, but I thought this year was a big improvement. And after trying it i actually want to buy a bottle of it this year did you well first of all did you did you try the white corn 
Um, the Mac no. Mike Mike no. Horn. Yeah, so epic that, fail. That like ruined me to Woodford Master Collection because that was like far and away probably the worst product that was released in the past five years. And that's saying a lot because there's a lot of Orphan Barrels that came out that uh, I think Hoop and Holler was, was almost undrinkable. Hoop and Holler was pretty bad. Mike Horn. So I will say this. Are you a fan of Japanese whiskey? Uh, yeah. Yeah, not a humongous fan. I like bourbon, but I enjoyed it. I think it reminds me of a Japanese whiskey. I think that the the malted barley does definitely – come through and i think that's maybe why i don't like it i'm not a, a big uh scotch it definitely or... tastes different is yeah, it close it's... to like a but parker's it's... malt or anything like that yeah and that's actually what i'm drinking here tonight is parker's malt um okay it is I, think it... I mean you got de there's definitely here. like a, a smokier malt to it I just yeah how smoky it. is it is it it's you know not overly more smoky. that heated smoke but okay I just think, a little bit. I, I feel like the last few smoky whiskeys I've had have just been like a campfire. and No, I, I wouldn't describe it as a campfire at all. Yeah, it tastes like twigs. Say, okay. This reminds me a little bit of the American Prairie um, <laughs> West. So I would say a little bit campfire. What's the age on it? Um, I don't know if they told it. No age statement. But... Yeah, there's no age. Hmm. There's so, bourbon usually eight, like six to eight, right? It's somewhere around there. I, I think I think Woodford yeah. does something that's a little bit interesting, and I'll I'll be the one to give them a little accolades here, right? I think that us as a lot of bourbon drinkers in the market are starting to get a little spoiled, and they we we are starting to expect a certain level of what bourbon should taste like, or a certain level of like they should you know have this bourbon characteristic. Maybe they're just slightly different nuances between different distilleries. However, what they're doing is they're going like completely off the rails here, right? Is they're trying to make something that's completely like, is going to like make you go like, Oh, this is not like a bourbon at all. This is a completely different, uh, you know, taste palette to completely different everything. Right. I mean, uh, Eric, you're drinking that, that, that Parker's uh, malt. That was uh, the PHC release from two years ago. And I didn't think it was very good. However, I still I like a I still like a bottle just to be able to say like, let's change it up every once in a while. And I think yep. that's that's some of the problems that that some of the more experienced bourbon drinkers are are kind of not realizing is that you need to just be able to have like just go and experience different flavors that are out there. Like they all shouldn't just taste like generic bourbon anymore. Like if if they're gonna try to push the envelope and try to do new things, like you have to understand that there's gonna be there's going to be mostly fails, but there's going to be some wins. But a lot of these are just going to have something that you, you're going to have to understand that it's not going to just taste like a normal or regular bourbon. It's got to be outside of that to make you want to, you know, try something different, I guess you could say. I don't think they call this a bourbon, though. Um, I think they actually, because of the, the way that they smoke the malt, they, don't, they, don't, they actually just call it cherry wood smoked barley. This is hmm. not technically a bourbon. Which that is, I mean, to Kira's point, that is interesting. You know, Buffalo Trace is over here using lasers and all kinds of other things to get their experimental experimental collections. This seems a little more within the whiskey realm of, hey, we smoked cherry with, or we smoked with cherry wood, the malt. And so while you may not get the flavors you recognize, it's still an interesting take to see what happens. What's is it still in the same master's collection price of like a hundred bucks or so? Yeah, it'll be yeah, nine. It's a hundred dollars. And they so see, the bottle actually yeah. says Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. It does, on it. Yeah, it does say. I see the bottle yeah. it does say Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Which so, I guess as long as it's thirty five percent, still enough for fifty one of the they, corn. They, I guess it wasn't the barrel that I thought. It was the malt itself was uh, I guess they use a cleaning process and they use cherry wood, smoked cherry wood to malt the barley. Hmm. That's interesting. Which, At least it's something different, right? So I, I would totally agree. I mean, they are actually trying. They are putting out a product that actually is aging as opposed to lasers and TerraPure and stuff like that. And honestly, Brown Foreman has been killing it, I think, lately with a, really, a couple of really good products. So... While, I'm actually drinking. I a, while I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I do salute the fact that they are trying different recipes for stuff. I would agree with that. 
Oh, man, I think we had a few uh, Brown Foreman converts tonight. Yeah. Well, and I will compliment Brown Foreman. I'm drinking a uh, double oaked rye that's from Woodford. It's actually pretty good. I like it. Which the the regular Wood, Woodford rye is actually really good. Um, and we all know 1920, of course, from Old Forester. So, you know, for being my least favorite distillery, they've put out some – releases that I would uh, definitely drink on on uh, multiple occasions. So, I love Statesman. I love this year's birthday bourbon. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't had the Statesman yet. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. really good I just can't year. pull the trigger. It's I got to go, go see the movie first, and then I can <laughs> feel like I'm allowed to buy it. And with typical fashion, we've got uh, a lot of comments rolling in. Kyle Anderson, Z Hayden, everybody just is talking about Old Forester 1920 as their favorites and stuff. So uh, we always we typically give a shout out for that. Uh, it seems like every show, along with Henry, <laughs> Henry McKenna. So <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. must because if you don't, then somebody is guaranteed to comment. You guys only talk about bourbons I can't find. So yeah. they say no. Go listen to minute twenty one thirty six. And yeah. Statesman is a fifty five dollar bourbon, and even though it's less proof than the nineteen twenty, the the barrels came from a hotter source in the warehouse, and I think it comes through in the taste. Uh, somebody asked. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have had a chance to try Corsair's Triple Smoke. I haven't. Somebody's asking if you uh, have. Yeah, any- I've had it. It's actually. I think I still have it in the cabinet somewhere. It tasted more like a mezcal to me or like uh just very intense like um more more burnt like a hickory smoke or like a, i don't even remember the woods they use but you gotta you gotta be in the right mood to enjoy that one of course there's one who just throws all kinds of crazy experiments as well but that was one i, I did not enjoy Right. Uh, somebody was asking about that. If you know if it was smoky, like how would it compare to it? But it sounds like it's gonna be on uh, two separate yeah. planes oh, right there. It, it would be. You'd probably have to take the Woodford, pour it through a couple of ashtrays, and then it'd be similar to the triple smoke. <laughs> well, I guess we're not having Corsair on the show anytime soon now either. Um, <laughs> no, I like what yeah. Corsair does, but that's kind of their thing. Is they're, you know, they're they're gonna throw some crazy things out there. <laughs> Their bottles are so ugly, though. They have the ugliest. Thing. Really? See, I I like the uh, like three dudes, but I also do my designing Microsoft Paint, so that could be why I enjoy them. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so there was another question that came out, and somebody said, "Has there ever been a good Woodford Masters release?" And if I recall correctly, there was there was one. Of, I think it was five years ago. It was like the the four wood. Something like that. I think everybody everybody yeah. kind of gave very positive reviews about that one. And there was the Chardonnay finish. I'm gonna years ago that everyone seemed to like too. Wasn't there a rye that was pretty good a couple years back? Um, None of them like, like it, go for more than ninety nine on secondary, which I find interesting. I, I don't think they command much um, demand, but not to say that they're not some hidden gems in there. I just I find a lot of coal when I try them. See, we got They're brandy usually available. I always see them on the shelf all throughout the year. Yeah, I think it was the forward selection in 2013 and 2012 that was pretty good. Yeah, that's um, what I, I remember that had some positive reviews out there. I think yeah. that's the only one that that even if you can find it, will still patch. Uh, you know, we'll still have to pay a little bit more than retail. But so let's go ahead and we'll uh, we'll move on since you know we we gave uh, Brown Foreman their their little uh, ten minutes here on on here. Their their paid sponsorship. I hope everybody yeah. got their check in the mail we this got, week. We got a contract <laughs> in the works. I am I am okay with that. If Brown Foreman, you'd like to sponsor the show, we will say all good things all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they actually will if we want them to. They'll bring on. Uh, they'll bring on some. Maybe we'll get Chris Morris on here. We, we will take on. Here's what's, on here. here's what's funny is they. Uh, I'll so, choose, we'll we'll get Jackie. We'll get Jackie. Yeah, let's get Jackie. She, she cute. <laughs> In twenty twenty or uh, two thousand five and two thousand six, they did a four grain. In two thousand nine, two thousand ten, they did a seasoned oak. Um, is Buffalo Dang. Trace just Buffalo copy? Trace copy? <laughs> <laughs> They they did a sweet mash. It doesn't Buffalo Trace have a sweet mash coming out? I have no idea. Of, if you're not using eight grains, you need to get out of here. <laughs> like four grains so yesterday. We need eight grains. E.H. Taylor white corn's coming very soon. <laughs> yeah. Just wait for it. 
Can't wait. So let's Very go ahead. Good. Let's let's kind of roll on to the next topic here, right? So we are in the uh, the height of the release season. We've had antique collections start rolling out in a few different states. Uh, I know I've been on the chase. Um, I know the the secondary market. It's kind of going up. It's going down. It's it's kind of finding a, a little bit of a plateau. But there was a uh, it kind of happened this past week and. Um, well, we're going to call them out and we're going to kind of, uh, beat the hammer home a little bit. So there was another blogger from professor cocktail. His name's David J Montgomery. Um, I've kind of went out and titled it, you know, put in the show notes that he's a moron for doing this because, uh, all the bloggers on this panel, except for yours truly except get, yeah, they actually get antique samples. Sent well, maybe now they'll, well, they'll lose his. Now, now that there's an open spot, let's see yeah. if we can go ahead and take it. Um, well, you know, they all get 375 milliliter samples of antique collection that are there for reviews and, uh, you know, trying to just get the word out and stuff like that. A, I don't really know if they need to send antique samples anymore because everybody's going to say, like, they want it anyway. So, like, what's the point? Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised anyway, they still do it because only they can only hurt them. 375. Yeah, don't they're, don't they're make it sound too spoiled. They're, <laughs> they're uh, a quarter of the size of this. Okay, so that's great. <laughs> Okay, so back to topic here. Uh, <laughs> what, he, what he tried doing is actually selling his samples on the secondary market. And oddly enough, people were sitting there. I mean, I think it was up to like 200 something bucks at some point, right? But he tried, because look at it this way. People used to do this all the time with like scalping tickets on eBay. They'd say like, oh, two tickets to the Ohio State Michigan game, but you're actually bidding on this big pen that's right here instead of the tickets, right? And so he tried doing that saying this 375 milliliter of Blanton's plus you get free VTAC samples, right? <laughs> so um, That's not what he I, said. Oh yeah, he did. Oh yeah, he did. I read it as you're getting both of these. Oh yeah, well, you're getting you know, both. He of them, said, but "Who's going to pay two hundred dollars for a three seventy five of Blanton's?" It was just regular Blanton's, right? Yeah, it was just the regular Blanton's. But the B tax samples were the the extra kicker that yeah. you get for free, along with the the Blanton's, right? Uh -huh. So that's his his kind of, I guess you could say, trying to go. Uh, underneath the radar of saying like, oh, I'm not actually selling these, right? Which it's bullshit. Um, it's brilliant. Uh, he's, an, he's an asshole for doing it because there's a lot of people that try to, uh, you know, they're, they're respectable people in this world and, and he kind of put a, a disgrace on it. So um, we'll kind of see what happens. Like I think uh, Buffalo Trace might, you know, change their sample distribution process a little bit. So I don't know if you guys have any uh, uh, thoughts on the matter as well. I mean, I don't see if he did anything wrong. It was a gift given to him. He's allowed to. I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's to do he wants, I was going to try to play devil's advocate, but yeah, it's just a. That's a pretty shady thing to do. You know, you know what those samples are given to you for. It's to do a review. Look, if you don't use all the samples, like I've given mine away and you know sent them to other people, but to try to sell something that that just seems really shady um, and. Shout out to Maxwell and Superfly Bourbon. Apparently, he uh, the guy has been contacted by Sazerac, and like they're threatening action, which I don't know that they could really, um, really do anything. I mean, I don't think that's a real illegal act if it didn't actually go through. But um, yeah, they got the inside information, Eric as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what changes from that. I mean, I'm sure he'll never get a sample from them again, but at the end of the day, you got to just be thinking a little bit better than uh, to think that that's just going to go over well and nobody's going to have a problem with that. I mean, who's who's going to sell samples anyway? Now, I do have this, though, if you guys want. I can <laughs> here. I mean, if, like, if y'all want to send me 25 for shipping, I'll send that for free. Start the well, bidding. And the funny the thing Woodford was, samples. there was like nothing out of his samples. I mean, it's a pretty small sample to start with. So then I'm like looking at his reviews. Well, what did he even review it on? He must have taken one sip and then thrown them up on the secondary really <laughs> fast. Um, and I swear, if he screws this sample thing up for all of us, I am going to be. <laughs> he's not. There's always idiots. And he's a moron. He's a he. Posted samples like a dumbass. His name is ingrained in Buffalo Trace, but you know that the other distilleries aren't going to care. They'll still send them. He'll say, I'm a blogger. They'll send him samples, but he won't get samples from Buffalo Trace, and that's it. It's not going to go any further than that. People are 
look, the, people are greedy in this hobby. We know that. I, I don't think we've ever seen a level of greed like that before. Like that's that's pretty in, in, intense. But I'm still surprised they responded to it. I don't know. I'm surprised they even like. I feel like I, they had to. They I just feel like they had to, but I'm surprised yeah. they even care. I don't know. I, I honestly, I don't know if they do, but. They just put out the press release about spending half a million dollars to ke- to crack down on the bourbon secondary market and sell illegal pappy counterfeits and all this stuff. And then that happens. And, you know, if they say, well, who cares? Everyone's going to, you know, just blast them. So they, they yeah. did the right thing from a PR perspective in my no, mind. Like, I think it just – go go ahead. Well, I was right. saying, I think it just shows you that they are trolling the secondary market to see what – what they can price stuff at and like see what's going on there so they can start to see, well, if they're doing this then we can do this, you know, I don't know. It just seemed kind of like, I, I think they should stay out of it, but yeah. whatever. Somebody ratted him out to Sazerac. And say, it was not me. Although I do love ratting people out. I did not <laughs> send the stuff to Buffalo Trace. Somebody sent, sent those to Buffalo Trace. Oh yeah. And I think they sent them really fast because according to him, he like, took it down and Buffalo Trace or Sazerac contacted him. It was pretty upset. Eric, yeah. I always kind of wondered, so what happens when the antique collection samples come in at breaking? Do they get split three ways? Do you like rocks or paper for them? Or Yeah, the last two years we've split them up just so we yeah. can review them faster and get them on the website. Hmm. I was wondering, or if you go to like David Montgomery and say, all right, I'll give you a hundred bucks for your samples. <laughs> 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 That'd be a good no, way to do it. You know, John yeah. Hansen getting full bottles right like where where is his in-depth reviews and his barrel numbers and his, uh, he posts on instagram that's or twitter or something. 140 characters. Like, yeah we need to get hands you know like let's let's let the bloggers move into the 50 milliliter sample world and let's go with full bottle i'll even split it with you guys i'll take the saz 18 you know you guys can take a stag if you want maybe i'll have the handy and we just do it that way. Like it's 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 gonna make it better for our reviews going forward. I'm gonna push Buffalo Trace for that. You go ahead. Yeah, y'all. see what you can get down there. Yeah. CC, me, CC me on that email. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> don't CC me. I don't want to be a part of that. <laughs> he wants to still get samples. Somebody had a question in there. As, as long as we're on the topic of BTAC, um, I said, do you want to address the disgraceful practice of truck stalking? So I want to share with you guys. Um, a little story of how bad it's gotten in Atlanta. And we all know that it gets worse every year, every year. We hope that there's a little bit of relief. Last Thursday, um, a local store, small store, but very a great store, um, posted on their Facebook page. They said, good things happen to those who wait till Friday. So all the local Atlanta guys follow this page. Um, he didn't even say what he was going to get. There were 15 people waiting for him to open at 9 a.m. on Friday morning. Then he said, guys, the truck's not even here. Well, the salesman had never even mentioned Antique to him. He told him E.H. Taylor barrel proof two bottles and one or two bottles of Old Weller Antique. So mm-hmm. by – but he didn't know this. Well, I guess by 3.30, there were 20 people in his parking lot waiting for the truck to finish unloading everything. And he went out to them and he said, this is what I've got. Two E.H. Taylor barrel proof and two Old Weller antique. And everybody's like, glad, glad well, you're patient. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's just, it's just a state of how bad it is. People will follow trucks. They were people just driving around waiting for the national truck to pull in. And, you know, the, the greed is just. Kenny and I have done that before. I'm not gonna yeah. I was going to say, following <laughs> trucks a couple of years ago was actually yeah. a really good tactic of mine. Now it's like everyone's way too far ahead of me yeah well here's the thing like don't get me wrong like yeah i i've done it before uh however nowadays there's no point in doing it um Mm -hmm. because if you're gonna here's and here's the way it kind of works here is that no matter what um this is how all the stores work you either are you've built a relationship with the store owner he's not going to sell it first come first serve to whoever just shows up like those days are not going to happen um, second is that they're sure you can follow them there and then you're going to pay three, four X retail for it. Right. They'll, they'll do it for that. And you're going to pay three, $400 per bottle. Right. That's a possibility. Uh, and then C is that you're going to show up and they're going to be like, Oh, sorry, we're going to hold this for our Christmas raffle. 
So <laughs> like, there's, there's no point in following trucks. Like there, yeah. there's just really no point in doing it anymore. Um, at least that's how it works here. Now I, I don't be wrong. I'm sure. And I actually, I know somebody that did it with Van Winkle, like back in 2012, 2013. Yeah. And they don't worry. They cleaned house. Right. And it mm -hmm. used to work, but it doesn't work anymore. So yeah, you can, you can kind of quit doing it. I know a lot of store owners don't like it, especially the delivery drivers probably aren't fans of it because they don't want to be <laughs> in Fast and Furious 9. So They probably feel like rock stars, though. Like, you know, <laughs> the crowd 20, for the crowd 20 people for just me. waiting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I've even seen it now, like when they're unboxing a truck, like they don't, you don't even see Stag or Van Winkle boxes anymore. They like pack them inside like old Forrester boxes and all this other kind of stuff. So you don't even see the boxes anymore. So if you're trying to wait for it, like that's how they try to fool you. Um, so it's like the, the Willet putting the, the Willet 28 year boxes or something during bourbon fest. <laughs> no, yeah, they, they actually, yeah, they were just selling 12 years, but they had 28 year boxes that was in. So uh that started a, a panic for about eight minutes something like that yeah that's um we uh in, in florida we have the abc stores and you know everybody kind of knows their delivery dates so you'll you'll get to a store and you'll see like the eight dollar an hour guy just back there flinging through boxes crossing stuff off the sheet and like 10 guys just standing around watching him work. I'm like, he's probably never had an audience for his job before. He probably is like, man, this is awesome. Here we go. <laughs> just doing it extra slow to see everybody get more and more frustrated with them. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's something that they, they either like or don't like. I don't really know. But, um, you know, when you're, when you're talking about ABC, you know, this was actually something that I put out on our Facebook page today. And it was kind of a question that I put out there was to figure out if, if you live in an ABC or you live in a government controlled state, you know, because I'd mentioned that if you want antique collection, you want Pappy, like whatever, like you got to have these relationships, right? Like you have to have these, you need to be a good patron at a store. Um, you need to do whatever it is to, to make sure that you're recognized there. Um, but when you're in a government controlled state um, and we have ABC stores and stuff like that, like what, what point does having a relationship even matter anymore? Um, and I know that, Blake, you're in somewhat a controlled state, right? With Florida, no. So it's they're just they're not controlled. It's just called ABC. Um, they do control the Weller line, though. So yeah, but it's just like my, a big my hot spot. A big, um, what do you call it? A big? Uh, it's not a franchise, but um, you know they have uh, Ponzi locations. Scheme. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a Ponzi scheme. No, they have locations all over the state, but it's not, um, not, it's not like state controlled or anything like that. So I think Florida and Texas. Were but back to the original question, I do think it still matters because Hello. we're the what? <laughs> Florida and Texas were two states that had contracts with Sazerac before Weller 12 ever blew up. And I think they get a set amount. If I heard this correctly, they um, something happened in Texas said like the Texas ABC board and the Florida ABC board said we want X amount of Weller per year before Bourbon blew up, and so they those two states still get a, a large share of it, but the ABC controls I guess where it goes within the state, but they do get like Florida and Texas are supposed to get really large Weller twelve allocations. Yeah, and that's true. I mean, it was it was on shelves here for the longest time, even after it was still gone in most other places. And even at that, I still kind of took it for granted. But now it's it's we're kind of on everyone else's track. You know, we still get a fair amount. But um, yeah, I, I think uh, Chuck even mentioned that in his last Bourbon Pursuit interview about how uh, Texas loved the weeded bourbon and the Weller line way before it was you know, what it is today. Um, so I guess Florida had about the same thing going on. Florida was my go-to. I'd go every October to Santa Rosa, <laughs> go to ABC, yeah. and I'd get like, I'd be like, yeah, you will in 12. We're like, yep, we got cases of it just sitting around. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, take as much as you want. <laughs> yep. And Still now, yeah. now just, I call and they're like, oh, we're doing a lottery. Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> they still get the same. <laughs> Hold on. Year, but, but it's just, you know, as you know, with bourbon, it's harder to get. Yep. Eric, I'm like, you got anything good? And they're like, yeah, we got this great Angel's Envy, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Eric, you ever had your... that? 
What is your go-to weed of the time? To me? Um, hmm. Yeah, usually Weller 12, I guess. I still have a few old bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty Hanging typical. Yeah. yeah, so uh, so anyway, to kind of get back to the, to the topic at hand again, man, we are off the rails, like, everywhere we go tonight. <laughs> um, Hang on, time, hold on, hold on, before, before we move. Eric, why do you have no pictures and no furniture in that room? Is this like the punishment room that people can do when they're bad? <laughs> yeah. No, I, was, I painted these walls and uh, I kind of eh, might repaint them, but... <laughs> just <laughs> keeping the options open just in case. There's a cockroach on your wall back there. You got to get rid of that bad boy right there. <laughs> no, no, that's the, uh, the little thing for the door, the door stop. Oh. But back to bourbon. <laughs> back to bourbon now. <laughs> we don't stick with bourbon that long. You got to realize we, we got um, to pick on the new guy a little bit. No, it's all good. <laughs> So, um, so it was kind of, there was a few different comments in here. So JC said, my buddy won the Pappy at a raffle and turned it down since he thought he entered the raffle to win the bottle outright until he figured out he actually had to pay for it. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then where was, where was this at? Uh, Chris J says it's all lottery and VA. And this is kind of going back to, the, uh, if you go to the Bourbon Pursuit Facebook page, this is kind of where the conversation went is when you look at some of these control states where everything is centralized through a lottery, um, you know, you're talking VA, you're talking Pennsylvania, you're also talking Ohio now. Um, this is, this is a, an inherent problem that people have said like, shit, who cares? Like, I don't need to build a relationship anymore because anything that's rare or interesting, like they can't help me get it. They can't, they can only get what they can get. So really the only benefit of actually having a relationship is if you want like a random Elmer T. Lee or an old Willer antique, like that's or it. Or if you need a new friend, you know, you just, you just need friends. Or just a buddy, you know? <laughs> so, so that was, I thought that was interesting to say the least. But. My buddy and me. Um, God damn it. This is going to be the worst to like edit. Like you guys are all over the place. Um, all right. So we'll get, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll move to the next topic here. Uh, so Carrie did some sleuthing and, and you know, this was kind of a rumor that spread on Facebook this week. And then Carrie sends a few emails and then we come to find out in 2018, you can expect no Eagle rare picks to go to any retail stores. So, Kerry, kind of talk about the, the story behind that. So, there are two things going on. Number one, uh, they tried um, some samples of their Eagle Rare barrels. There is inventory, but they had a large rush on barrels, and they actually found that they're not tasting as good as they should be for 10 year old. And so, that along with the fact that um, they just, the demand was so high and they couldn't keep up with the demand. They decided to that for 2018, they're going to shut the barrel program down completely for Eagle Rare. So that means no stores, no private clubs, no bars, nobody's getting any Eagle Rare in 2018. Now, the good news is um, what I've heard from them is that there's plenty of inventory. And in 2019, the program opens back up. It'll be back to normal. So all of the flippers will not profit off of this what it will do is just basically reset the stock a little bit and so i i think honestly it's it's good it's a good move um if you're not if you know instead of just keep pushing it out um you know give it some time to mature a little bit get the program back on par and um and that's what it is but the good news is that right now is when all of the 2017 eagle rare barrels are coming out so a lot of stores are getting it right now it's, there's um yeah, you know, still a bunch of stores in Atlanta that have them. So uh, it's good to stock up. You don't have to go crazy on it. You don't have to buy cases, assuming that you're going to, you know, like the Elijah Craig 12, the 12 year going away. Um, just buy a couple to have, because for me, it's it's my favorite everyday drinker. But um, there will be none next year. And I can tell you probably around this time next year, people will probably be paying maybe, you know, double for one, but it's not going to be anything crazy. So reiterate what the problem was again. Did you say the, the barrels just weren't up to par or there weren't enough of them? No, let me actually pull up the um, – Yeah, so what happens with all those barrels? They're just going to let them sit for another year? What if – Yeah, what so, if they start next year? The minimum yeah. age for Eagle Rare is 10 years. It's, it's not the set age. It's the minimum age. They just have to be 10 years old. 
And so, but how um, how many barrels are going past ten years within the last four to five years? They actually had a miscalculation in the barrel model, and they did not have <laughs> as many barrels coming of age in 2018. And the barrels they tasted didn't meet their profile standards, so they won't bottle any that aren't the best. So uh, they would have had to drop the age statement in order to um, support the private program in 2018. So they um, held it back one year to let all the, I think they have a lot of Eagle Rare that they made, you know, nine years yeah. ago. And I so- I think Buffalo Trace is the best at falsely creating demand like, of everything. <laughs> they like, should have hired me to do, do their Excel uh, barrel projections. I've never had a miscalculation in my Excel. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it, uh, yeah. I, it, uh, yeah and like I, my, find this, I, I find this interesting. Like VOBs allocated bullshit. Just crank that shit out. Well, well I, I find this like really interesting because, um, you know, I've done a Eagle Rare pick before and then I, most of the ones that were on the market, they're all like 11, 11 and a half years old, right? I don't think I saw an Eagle Rare pick hit the market that was like, you know, at like 10 years, three months, right? They're a lot of them were over 11 years old. So I was kind of surprised when I, when I read this or, you know, saw that. Yeah, they, um, you know, it's, I think if you look at Four Roses um, as an example, their private program continues to go at the same rate. And, you know, the, the recipes that used to be 10 plus years old are eight. Um, they're getting younger, eight years, three months for some recipes. You're getting a lot of Q yeast that I don't know why anybody would buy a Q yeast barrel, but they, but they have to sell them anyway, so they buy them. But, you know, it's, it's like you, you just you, – the barrel programs are always going to exceed – the supply, I think, until they start to limit them. And then when they do, hopefully the idea is that the supply, um, you know, is greater than the demand. So the the idea is that there's just not enough uh, regular store picks. However, that's not going to stop the normal distribution of correct. Eagle Rare being blended and uh, sold then, correct? Correct, yeah. There'll be, there will be Eagle Rare. It just will be not a private program. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. I, I think, you know, when you give that explanation, I think it, uh, I think there is a little bit more clarity there. I uh, appreciate that, you know, you can say thanks for the transparency. Um, you know, I think hopefully this may open up something else. Maybe they'll say like, oh, maybe I will do more Blanton's single barrels or something like that. Right. Like I'd like to see them open up something else as, as a, another Avenue. Right. I mean, how cool would it be to, yeah, I was say, how cool would it be to have Elmer T. Lee single barrels again, right? Yeah, I misspoke. I thought you were saying Eagle Rare was being not put out for, but it's only the private barrel picks. Okay. Correct. It's only the private program. I'm sorry, Buffalo Trace. I did not mean that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ryan, you're going to get us in trouble with like everybody, man. You know that, right? I've already done it. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, before we start wrapping this up, there is there is one thing that, uh, you know, kind of going back to the antique collection and I had a I had a friend send me a message earlier and we, we kind of got it talking and, and he has this theory and I thought it was like, oh, it's a pretty good theory. So as everybody kind of knows that there were an insane amount of more stag bottles this year, right? Yes. Uh, what was it? 30, 38. 000? So 38,000 bottles. Now, um, if you understand or recognize these were also 15 year George T stags too. This is also the 15th anniversary or the 15th, whatever it's the anniversary of when the 2002 stag was first released and they won whiskey of the year. So his theory was that they were onto something and that we could hopefully expect to see this many stag bottles in perpetuity. Yeah, it would be nice, right? So I actually asked um, Chris Comstock that question. I think I'd seen that somebody put that in a group or on Twitter or somewhere. So I asked him that question, and he he kind of danced around it a little bit and said, well, you know, uh, any, any Buffalo Trace barrel that we tasted eight years that's exceptional has the chance to go on to be stag. Um but it does make a lot of sense that they would be cranking out a whole lot more when they're like, Oh man, people love this stuff. And if not all else fails, we got 
a ton of Buffalo Trace that we can stock up for in eight years anyways. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a continued number of bottles for the next few years. Now, let that be said, and then next year it's going to be down to like 3,000 right. bottles or something. <laughs> we all go, what just happened? <laughs> like, oh, no, we our projections were wrong. Go back to the spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if that were the case, um, which kind of, you know, the whole Eagle Rare uh, didn't have enough for the uh, um, barrel program made me think like, well, maybe they're stocking more and more away to get to Eagle Rare 17. You know, it's been down. Um, well, it's always it's always low, but it's even lower this year. I think it was only like what? Eric's going to be able to answer 1, this. 1,600. Yeah, what was like 1,600, 1,700? Yeah. yeah. And I, I would agree um, with that. I would say maybe they're trying to – but look how much Stag Jr. there is now. I mean, I, I don't know how many times I've walked into stores this year and Stag Jr. was on a shelf. I mean, you couldn't find Stag Jr. two years ago, three years ago, even one year ago. You couldn't find it now. Just depending on the season, you can go into a store and there's six Stag Jr. on a shelf. So I think it may just be one of those things where it's become – more popular people love the barrel proof it's competing with elijah craig barrel proof and um and perhaps bookers even though bookers did the whole price move but maybe it's just they have a crap ton of match bill number one yeah <laughs> yeah everybody's okay I'm, with that yeah yeah i mean it's, for sure because i mean it seems like well i know with heaven hill the elijah craig 12 went away because they're pushing so much evan williams out that there's not enough to to let it sit for that long. So I'm just surprised that they had enough to have a big uh, push because it seems like most distilleries are pushing their flagship brands more than the special releases. Uh, that was funny. There's, somebody said, Jeremy Kendrick said, the more Kerry drinks, the lower he is going. <laughs> <It's kinda> <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's slowly sinking out of the picture. Pretty soon we're here. just going to see a visor. <laughs> <laughs> There's there's another question from Kevin, and we'll, we'll kind of have this be the last question for tonight because I know we're kind of uh, rolling to the top here. So Kevin Brinkerhoff said, I find Buffalo Trace private barrels to be the least interesting. Uh, the only great one I've had is Blanton's. The most of them, he said, are pretty close to the you know the standard profile. Um, I kind of want to get your all's take because I can definitely see this being uh, a typical thing, right? Um, a, in, in, but you have to understand is that they want it to be – you know, not completely different. They had to be somewhat close to just subtle nuances. That's, I think that's the whole point of choosing a private barrel. But the ones that I've seen that have been either the most off profile or the ones that have the uh, more unique taste to them are just a standard Buffalo trace. Um, because it just seems like there's more variation with that mash bill or whatever's happened inside the wood that you have a, a lot of different variations uh, that's actually happening for that particular uh, type. Do you guys have any other suggestions or, or ones that people could look for that might have, um, you know, a little bit different flavor profile than just standard? Pappy 15 is really one that I think. <laughs> yeah. Really good <laughs> well, I, I think that's the thing with these is it's like, yeah, it's just a slightly improved version, but you're still just paying 30 bucks or 25 bucks or whatever it is. And some of the Eagle Rare 10 year picks that I've had, um, like I had a, a cork and bottle um, pick that was just phenomenal and it was 30 bucks. So it's like, you could just stock up on this and drink this every day and, and be set. Um, so I think that's where the advantage is. Well, yeah, it's not that different. If you get the right barrel, it is um, somewhat improved, but you're still paying the same price, which is usually a steal. We had one of the funkiest. You remember that sample, Kenny? We had that funky Buffalo Trace somebody sent us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do remember that. It was um, – uh, I forget who like who picked it or whatever, but, I mean, it was – we were tasting it, and we were kind of like – I've we had no idea what this was. Yeah, because he sent us, like, these blind samples, and he's like, guess what they are, and, like, we had no clue. And it was like Buffalo Trace, and we're like, that's not that's not possible. Yeah, was it non chill filter? I can't be, but that's weird. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Eric, I'll ask you a question to get you kind of hyped up here. What do you think of the okay. incident? <laughs> what was that? You cut out. 
What's what do you think of the uh, the the NCF hype or the non chill filter hype that's that's kind of taken over the market where it it's all of a sudden demanding high prices and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, pass. <laughs> <laughs> not a, which isn't it it's something like over 107 proof the seven proof the chill filtering doesn't make that big of a difference under 94 you can't you can't non-chill filter it because it'll it'll get cloudy when you put ice in it it's like 94 92 or something like that so uh, i i think it's a whole thing where everyone was so dead set on getting an oesk from the me portion of the warehouse of four roses i think it's a lot of hype but you know i mean hype geez. drives this whole hobby right it's all about That's what's true. the latest hype and what's the but i will Although, say that non-chill filtered old weather antique against chill filtered and there's just there's a I, at least the ones that I've tried are, are better. Um, not to say that that affects every product the same way, but for the old Weller Antique, I do find that the non-chill filter, there was a, we had a C plus S pick that was non-chill filtered, and it, damn, it was really good compared to some others. Now, that just may have been the barrel that was awesome. Um, I think it's, it's a good question for people to figure out where they can really tell a difference between the two. Yeah, that's um, – there was somebody – I think it was Chuck or somebody had a an article where they were talking about trying all the different uh, filtrations of – I think it was Michter's Rye, Michter's 10 years rye, 10 year rye, and they tried it like six or seven different times blind for, or different kinds of filtration, and they honestly thought it was different rye of how it was getting filtered. So it probably pay, plays a part, but as for – calling for a higher price i don't know i think it's still more hype on that part no i'm totally with you on that um so i guess uh i think that'll kind of that'll wrap it up for for this episode i, I kind of agree that the uh the ncf thing the the train can kind of slow down a little bit might as well just let everything be ncf at this point if it just makes everybody fucking happy right like just, <laughs> just let it go right so but um and this was actually one question that brian wanted to uh put out here and ryan will let you order or answer because uh you seem to be the one that likes to cause the most uh most trouble um uh, what what are uofl fans supposed to do now with their rick patino and jerick bottles now that patino has officially been fired from the university of louisville oh man this, this is a good topic. Uh, you know, probably just they, – they need to just open them up and, like, have a race to see who can finish them the fastest and, like, <laughs> just, like, end the pain of, like, all the shittiness they're going through right now because I, – I do have one question about <laughs> this. Will Kenny get his Rick Patino tattoo covered up now that he's been fired <laughs> from <laughs> – Oh, me? Yeah, my Patino tattoo, right? <laughs> Patino's got a tattoo that he's got to laser out because it says <laughs> national champs on the back. Louisville, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, been. fellas, I uh, want to say thank you again for, they for joining us. the championship, or they don't know yet? No, they uh, forfeited, no. right? Yeah. No, not yet. I don't. That's that's still being in the the discussion right now. Who knows? This doesn't get. Posted. They got to get through the first scandal to get to the second <laughs> one, and then to the third one. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's it's tur it's turtles all the way down from there. <laughs> all right so guys let's go ahead we'll wrap this up uh, i want to say thank you again for joining the discussion tonight i want to give you all one more chance to kind of go around the horn and let people know where you blog at um and how they can reach you blake you go first i'm uh blake from bourboner.com thanks for joining us tonight you can find me at bourboner.com bourboner on facebook twitter instagram that's b-o-u-r-b-o-n-r -R. eric you're up Boner. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old. No. I'm Eric from Breaking Bourbon. You can find us at breakingbourbon.com. Uh, we do all the social medias. We try to bring a little something different to each of those platforms in case if uh, you want to follow on all of us. And uh, we launched Patreon a couple months ago, and you can check us out there for some uh, little thank you gifts, too. Carrie, it's your Carrie. opportunity to play cleanup. That's what Carrie. you love to do. Yeah, so this is Carrie, and I run strangegreenroom.com. <laughs> uh, myself and Eric and smallgreenroom.com. 
Uh, you can also find me on suburbia.com, S U B O U R B I A, or Twitter at, at bourbon underscore gamer.com. And if I get drunk enough, I'll send you some samples. And we're pretty close to that, so stick around. <laughs> and, uh, as always, thank you guys for, uh, thank you, Kenny and Ryan and Brian, even though he's not here. Uh, I miss you, Brian. Heart you, boy. Uh, thank you to you guys, Bourbon Pursuit, for keeping up these podcasts and sticking with it and entertaining us for an hour while we go for our walks. You got it. No problem. Anytime. Very happy to do it, especially when you got a good banter like this. You know, it's it's really cool that we are in like the height of the season. There's a lot of actually whiskey news that's coming out, so we could we could almost do this like every other week at this rate because it's just <laughs> all the shit that's that's kind of happening. So yeah, I know Carrie would love that. <laughs> yeah, man. Every other week, I'm, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> then he's gonna start. He's gonna start asking for our advertiser money if he's. Uh, I think we should just yeah. go new topic. Next week is just no top. Or next time we do it, just there's no um, roster, no agenda. No agenda. Just we just go for it. Just freestyle the entire thing. Yes. That, but everybody has to come in at least four drinks deep, and we're just gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> that includes Eric. Eric, you're coming back. And you're gonna drink it. Where are you going? All right. <laughs> Yeah, you have to finish that the entire thing of Parker's before you join next time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, guys, thank you once again for joining. Uh, everybody, make sure you follow all these guys on uh, their social media platforms and also follow us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, as well as uh, Twitter, at Bourbon Pursuit. We also have Patreon at Bourbon Pursuit to help. Uh, support the show and keep it going. Um, yep. As Michael Urata said, don't forget to go out and buy the new Mictors 25 year, uh, 800 bucks. <laughs> It'll be, yes. be on the shelves real soon. Um, we didn't, we didn't really kind of, we forgot to bring that one up, but uh, thank you Mictors for your sponsor. We'll uh, look for your check in the mail. <laughs> and then uh, go ahead, Ryan, close us out, man. No, thanks to everyone for listening. Thanks to you guys for giving us your time. Uh, these community round tables, I think they're, our listeners' favorites. So I appreciate y'all taking the time to join us every month. Hey, Ryan, you yep. know that Kenny does all the work, right? Like, oh, ninety <laughs> percent of it. All the recording. He's got to cut it all. Like, you have it so nice. You just oh, chill. It's perfect. I just show up. <laughs> it's the pretty face of the group. That's that's what he's here for. You know, <laughs> my pay <favorite laughs> reflects it too. Yeah, he's got a <laughs> base guy for this. Yeah. No, thanks. Well, my wife just joined in. <laughs> no, shoot. No, shoot. She didn't know we're on. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, Patreon listeners, I'm a little behind on sending stuff out, but it's coming. Don't worry. Don't worry. So uh, appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. But don't leave because we're giving away samples. Kenny, <laughs> that's right. All right. right. Yeah. So, man, that's this is, this is going to be a brutal fucking editing yeah, job. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was brutal. So, so the um, Maker's twenty five eight hundred dollars. We didn't talk about that. Is that a good deal? I'll when it'll buy be it. Three thousand secondary. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy it. I'd buy it just for. I'd put it this way: I've got so much bourbon FOMO from the last time I had a twenty fourteen Maker's twenty in my hand, and it it was like retail five hundred fifty bucks. And I go to the checkout, and I'm like, "Oh, my wife's gonna kill me!" And I returned yeah. it. To the, and I returned it to the liquor store. Like good decision. I'm never, I'm never doing decision. that again. Yeah. Like God. What a, so so th- a couple of guys that I always trade messages with on Facebook <laughs> had sent me a message from like 2013 or 2014. So I started scrolling through all my old messages. Talk about depressing. I'm like, one, I was getting harassed for selling a stag. I think it was a 2013 for $220 when the market was $200. And I was passing on Pappy 15 because they wanted 425 And, you know, some this guy had a bunch of paper level, paper label Weller 12s that I'm just like, dude, nobody is paying $75 for Weller 12. It's not going to happen. Like, oh, jeez. Had I known then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, so Carrie, you know, we were talking about the next round table. I've got, um, uh, somebody, a, a good idea lined up for the next one already. So as everybody knows, Wade Wood for, uh, Wade Woodard, uh, very well. Right. So, yeah. you know how you always kind of like, sometimes we'll put out like those bourbon trivia questions, like some of those ones that'll stump you. Like if you have an 11 year old straight whiskey and then you redump it and age it for another four years, like what can be the, the actual, like. What, what's it, by the TTB? Like, what can this be called? 
So he's going to actually come up with like a good like 15 or 20 like brain busters for us. And we're going to kind of do that as an episode. Wait's oh, gonna that'll be good. Is he going to come on? Oh, yeah. well, you're, you're welcome. I had, we spent 30 minutes together getting him set up on Google Hangouts. So <laughs> just tell him, Wait, skip I have never heard him speak. That'd be awesome. He's a he's a really good guy, actually. He's a he he did the bourboner blind tasting with me the other day. We finally got him set up on his phone, but I'm like, all right, wait, I can hear you, but you obviously can't hear me. So, uh, well, he just, kicked me out of uh, SWT one time, so I'm gonna give him some shit. I I, I, su- I support that decision. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> What'd you get kicked out for? Uh, I got drunk and got angry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, if it like, makes you feel better, I got kicked out too, but I got let back in. I did. I got back in. Yeah, it just took a while. Yeah. Which it, it's – I don't know why people would want to moderate a group that has buying, selling, and trading. Um, it just – the amount that you would have to patrol and watch and try to take care of, whew, that's, that's a thankless job right there. Put it this way: the one, the one thing I have to give them accolades about is that group is run with an iron fist. Yeah, unlike unlike the other one with twenty thousand members, it's a fucking. Yeah, but nobody shit. goes. It's, to a, any it's of the a shit. Ones. It's a shit show. I know, but nobody. Everybody goes to that one group with the twenty eight thousand people in it because. Really, I I don't go there at all. I, I go to no, Wade's group. You can't. I mean, if you're gonna buy, if you're gonna sell, that's the place to go. If you're gonna buy, go to a. A more mature audience and one of the other boards but if you're selling there are so many idiots on that board that will yeah. buy anything i mean they'll buy samples of btac for god's sake <laughs> that's a valid point that's yeah a, it's i i have it i haven't heard a good authority that like try to try to keep yourself anonymous as we can on that one group of twenty thousand people um because apparently there is somebody with federal ID that's sitting there logging everything right now. Oh my ass. Somebody with federal ID. They, they're going after drug lords in Colombia. They don't care about little pipsqueak selling. I, I kind of thought the same thing, but I'm just like, I'm going to keep my nose clean for a little bit. So, Hold on, What was this? Who's keeping their nose clean? So you uh, left uh, strong water cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, the... <laughs> You know, I'm trying to trying my best not to bring up actual names, but that one group with twenty thousand people in it, you know, I've I've somebody told me that there are government issued people that are sitting there basically logging everything right now, um, and using that as just basically collecting data, so you can't actually just go back and delete it or try to hide it later on or anything like that. Really? <laughs> really? I mean, I don't know. And yeah, I, I think I the problem it. was is why it happened was because the admins like made it public. Or something like that, and so therefore, like, there's really like, no all way. right, we'll take it just in case. Uh, I've well, seen yeah. the government crack down on more um, frivolous things, I think, in my <laughs> than uh, buying and selling of liquor. So it's like, who, who knows? Maybe one day somebody just decides that's what's wrong with the country. We got to crack down on bourbon sales, and then a bunch of people get you know small misdemeanors and. <laughs> The funny thing is there's so many lawyers and professionals in the groups that I would kind of like to see that battle. Like it'd probably be a class action lawsuit against the government and everything else, but I don't know. But the thing is like this could this could be taken care of so much easy, like so much easier. Like I'm pretty yeah. sure there's at least one person that actually works at Facebook that are in all these fucking groups and all he has to do is just sit there and be like, close down, close down, close down, get out of the next mm-hmm. one, close down, close down. Like it would it'd be too easy just to like make Facebook like obsolete with with these bourbon trading forums. Well, we do. I mean if if Facebook suddenly said you can't sell any alcohol, what the hell are people gonna do? You just you it'll end up somewhere else on the internet, right? I mean, I'll, yeah. we're gonna have the Bourbon Community Roundtable dot com, and we're just gonna have a forum on there. <laughs> and we and yep. we're this is this is how it works. This is how we get around. This is how we make money. Is that it doesn't go between people. Like it goes in. Like we're basically like a holding tank for the money until like the bottles delivered or whatever. And then we like release the money, right? And then we're like a casino. We just take a small rake from each pot. Right. Millionaires. Next thing you know, <laughs> see, like that's a business idea right there. There we go. So we're gonna start. 
telling on Facebook now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get we're gonna get all these groups shut down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but no, I've seen Facebook employees come through the uh, Bourboner Facebook group, so I know they are in all these other groups. Like there was some guy who was in charge of community involvement at Facebook. And I'm like, okay, he knows what's going on. Facebook knows what's going on. Obviously, they just don't care at this point. Will they care eventually? I don't know. I mean, That's I know, I know of, I have friends that are police officers that are in these groups. <laughs> They're the ones buying the bourbon. Like they don't yeah. care, right? So, yeah. Yeah. It, I find that pretty amusing to me. So, which I wonder what happens whenever, um, um. If, if they are taking all this data down and then it's like, oh, this guy's a police officer. This guy works at, as a district attorney. This guy, you know, if, if they start putting all the names together. But um, Michael Rada says there are cops on pages. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I was just told that and I was kind of like, all right, well, I guess I'll try to go and flip my stag somewhere else. But <laughs> All right, fellas, I'm going to call it a night. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the same. Bur right. My bourbon journey, you're coming in a little late. <laughs> I think he's saying goodbye. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, you guys hold on one second. <laughs> I'm going to stop the broadcast real quick. But I uh, want to say thanks, everybody that joined. Uh, you know, we're still at 57 viewers. I know uh, we didn't get carried drunk enough tonight, so no free samples. But uh, maybe next maybe next month we'll figure it out. So uh, thank you, everybody that did join on the, the chat. And uh, – this will be a podcast coming out Thursday, pending the four hours that I have to put in to cut it all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You won't have to modify Eric too much, so that's good.